Hey everyone, we're at the world's largest electronics market. We are at SEG eMarket in Huachian Bay in China, which is within Shenzhen, one of the uh, largest cities we've ever been in. What we're going to do is walk through 10 floors and try to build a computer. We're not going for the cheapest build possible. We just buy on AliExpress and ship it for that. Instead, we are going for the most unique. So our goals today are to find a very unique case. We are going to try to find some open loop water cooling, but we'll see if we have to settle and look around for interesting CPUs, maybe X79, old school Xeon, something like that. So those are our goals. This place, uh, there's very little English spoken here, at least at a level that you could negotiate, you could ask about computer parts in. So my Chinese isn't great. We're going to do our best. Uh, well, the Don Wan Bu Hao, as you'll hear me say potentially a lot in there. Uh, but I can say things like, we are building a computer, we went to Tuan Itai Dian now, and we are looking for water cooling parts. Something very specific that I learned. We'll see if I learned the wrong phrases for 40 minutes on the plane. Let's go inside, look around, see what kind of interesting stuff we can find in Hua Chan Bay SEG. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte's X570 Master Motherboard. The X570 Master is what we use for all of our Ryzen 3000 CPU reviews and for extreme overclocking streams with the 3900X. The Master is built to handle more current than you'll push through your Ryzen CPUs. It has actual finned heat sinks for the VRMs, and it features a massively overhauled Gigabyte BIOS. Pick up the X570 Master for your Ryzen 3000 CPU at the link in the description below. This strip of Huachian Bay is a small part of a massive shopping district. Although Shenzhen is often associated with factories, the city is now slowly transitioning to accommodate some higher-end commerce and more service economy jobs. In fact, most of the factories we toured told us that finding workers in Shenzhen has become challenging, as many of the workers don't want to live the factory life that their parents did. As these factories creep further and further out toward Dongguan and Huizhou and seek automation to replace a dwindling supply of workers, Huachian Bay has sprung up with a mix of high-end, legitimate retail stores mixed with grungier wholesale fronts and street markets. SEGE market has floors upon floors of wholesalers and retailers, and Huachian Bay in general has some of the most unique computer hardware we've seen. If you've ever browsed AliExpress just for fun, like to find quirky hardware, there's a good chance that the things you've found ship from here, or at least can be found here. Unfortunately, it's also difficult to film here. Security often wordlessly and sternly instructed us to stop filming multiple times, both back when we visited in March and in May, and you generally don't want to push that envelope too far as a foreigner in China. For this trip, we entered negotiations at first to establish interest and then asked for permission to film. This got the local vendors on our side most of the time, but security would still stop us if spotted. So we had to lay low and some of this footage is a bit shaky as a result. Huachian Bay itself has pristine streets and it's dotted with skyscrapers that are illuminated by enough RGB LEDs to make Corsair blush. The streets are lined with smaller tea shops, local foods, and of course, massive upscale malls. A nice hotel here costs about $140 a night, and that'll get you views like this one, a room equivalent to what you'd find in a $400 a night Hilton in the US, and proximity to staff that speak fairly fluent English, Mandarin, and sometimes other languages. For reference, the conversion rate helps with this. It's typically close to one USD for about seven RMB, or the Chinese Yuan, and this is a relatively new district in a city that has 40 years of manufacturing history. It acts as a hub for electronics. Several of our factory tours were shot within 40 minutes of Huachian Bay, and these factories established the municipal infrastructure that allowed the newer service and commerce industries to pop up. A lot of this is wholesale driven. Buying one-off pieces of hardware is kind of rare and gets laughs from some of the market's vendors, but most are willing to listen if you make the first offer. The first question everyone asks is, how many do you want? and they're expecting probably dozens, if not hundreds, or potentially thousands for some of these smaller SMDs. You can also get things like custom PCBs designed and printed within 12 hours at SEGE market and have SMDs purchased for prototyping within minutes. You could then take it to a solder shop if you wanted and get MOSFETs, inductors, capacitors, and controllers all mounted to the board by a professional. If it's time to go to production, although not as good of a deal as just directly going to a factory, you could buy reels of service mount components at SCGE Market to install on your SMT line by the tens of thousands. This place does its best for rapid prototyping and production ramp up, but it also has a community built around sharing sales between each specialized seller. Of course, there's also a mix of fun, interesting components to buy. Um, 
可以打开吗？可以。This computer case immediately caught our eye. It's on floor four out of ten at SEG E Market, and the brand alone sells it. This is the three-body case made by the prolific case brand that everyone knows, Coolman. It comes with two 200 millimeter fans, two 120 millimeter fans, a couple of pentagrams, tempered glass, and well, it's acrylic, but the sticker says it's glass, and also RGB LEDs. The bargaining process was a bit rough, to say the least. Uh, uh I want to go to the store. 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 Uh, English isn't very common here, and my Chinese isn't very good. If I think through it beforehand, we can come up with half of the conversation. But keeping up with the response requires someone very patient and slow speaking who uses very simple words. Most of the haggling in reality ends up looking like this. If neither of you speaks the other's language that well, this is where phones come out and translation apps do their work. But it's not uncommon to see people from all over the world communicating this way at SEG E Market. The phone apps work well in most instances. Complex sentences will get head scratching from vendors, and the apps often mistranslate sentences that you build upon. But simple sentences are pretty easy. In this instance, after we both took turns fumbling through our phones, she told us that she'd have to run to the warehouse to grab a sellable boxed unit. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I, so I, is it in this building? Huh? Uh, um, so Julie. Uh, this uh it's like Julie Dian. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Um, she also wanted to know how many we were buying, and answering with one got a polite but tired-looking laugh. We are making this lady run downstairs and across the street, a 30-minute trek, to get us one case, and it's not even an expensive one. Upon approach, we thought we'd be able to just buy the one there, but these small stands act more like showrooms, showing what goods are available in bulk at nearby warehouses than actual stores. Many of these shopkeepers also work with the same warehouses as each other, but represent different products. It's a smaller scale version of retailers and suppliers in any economy, except localized mostly to one building. These shopkeepers spent 20 minutes with us, very patiently explaining how the process works, all by taking turns typing into translating apps, and so we didn't want to haggle too much on the price. They were polite and patient, and instead, we asked to see a few of the 120mm fans to make it a bit more worth their time. Of course, some things transcend language barriers and require no translation. Uh, so, 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 RGB. Oh, okay, okay. So, no RGB. Do I do mean by? For the case, she wanted 466 RMB, or about 66 US dollars. We threw in some fans and did ask for a small discount, but not much, ultimately settling on about 500 RMB for everything, or roughly 70 USD. That's not bad for a start. The case is probably one of the most interesting things we'll see here, and it'll get its own review in our standardized case testing bench. The fans will be for a different computer, but our $66 case starts off the build with something adequately weird. This started us on a bit of a fan kick. We wanted to find some high RPM Delta fans, or equivalent while here, and so we ventured to this booth. It's a perfect example of how lower floors of SEG E market work. We ask if we can buy the fans, and we're in turn handed a catalog of every fan you could ever want available for purchase in thousands of units at a time. We also found these interesting because there were no headers on the fans, so we'd have to find some of those, but that's no real challenge in a marketplace filled with literally thousands of small electronic components for everything you could make. This guy really didn't want to sell us just one fan, partly because they were his display units, but also because he wanted to move volume. We tried asking several times if we could just buy one or two, but he always pointed us back to the catalog and waved us off. Knowing now that he'd have to run to a warehouse just to make the maybe six US dollars that these are worth, it sort of makes sense. It just, it's not worth his time. Finally, we decided to take a different approach to negotiating and just offer a good price. I'll just make an offer, I guess. Uh, how should I offer? 10 bucks, 15? 15 might be kind of high, but we'll, let's try it. What gave me e by Okay, okay. Okay. E by Kwai Kui ma. Okay, you want 
Yeah. Because this is a factory. Because this is a factory. He's trying to say to buy it from the factory. Will you sell these to me? Hey, woman. This two, right? Because we are all from the Well, the John one is not good. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? Okay. 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 We handed over about 15 US dollars to make this easy. He didn't take issue with that offer, and we thought it might be on the high side, but we also just wanted to buy the fans and move on to other booths. For us, this was a good deal. A lot of people get hyper-focused on haggling when they see these types of videos, posting as armchair experts in the comments about how we could have gotten something for cheaper, but keep in mind that we're inconveniencing someone with general ignorance of how things work, limited language abilities, a camera in their face, and then asking to buy one of a low-cost item. And of course, this is all while the guy's trying to take a lunch break, too. So to us, $15 was fair for all the trouble, and he seemed happy with it, so everyone walks away with what they wanted. These aren't for our main PC build from this trip, but we do intend to put them to use. We needed to find some more parts for the actual computer. Looking around, we found some cool decommissioned Intel dual socket motherboards and tried to get a good deal on them, but the pricing just didn't work out. After accounting for the higher-end CPUs worthy of these boards, the total cost of two CPUs on a motherboard dual socket would have been about $900 USD, not RMB, which is way beyond our budget. At that price, we really might as well just buy some modern hardware in the US, and so we gave up on these options. Instead, we returned to the shop where we bought a cheap X79 motherboard back in March. The shopkeepers remembered us, so getting a good deal wasn't too hard here. We got an Intel E5 2670 Xeon CPU from about 2012, which is an 8-core 16-thread part at 3.3 GHz boost frequency, and then we coupled that with an interesting TG X79 V309 motherboard. Searching for this product strain doesn't really serve as much online. Taobao and Alibaba seem to indicate that this was an OEM motherboard at some point. It's not a good one, but that's why we liked it. It's just sort of strange. We noticed that some of these same model motherboards had differently colored SATA connectors, some a mix of red and black, some just black, some blue, and a mix of white and black or transparent 24-pin headers. This seemingly totally random selection of small parts on top of the same motherboard gave us confidence that we found the right product. The form factor isn't quite micro ATX and not quite mini ITX. It might be fair to call this mini DTX, which is a slightly longer form factor than many ITX, not quite as long as micro ATX, and the same width as many ITX. It's also incredibly uncommon. The biggest name that's doing a mini DTX board is probably the Asus Impact for the new Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. But beyond that one, it's unlikely you ever really hear about this for mainstream hardware. We also bought two sticks of ECC 8 gigabyte memory at 1600 megahertz CL11, and this is DDR3 as a reminder. This allows us to populate both DIMM slots on the motherboard, but we're still obviously losing two of the channels on the 2670 CPU. It's a four channel capable CPU, but we have two DIMM slots on the board. So yeah, it's not a good build, but that's sort of the point. It should be fun, and again, a bit weird. The total cost of the motherboard, the former eight core, uh, high-end Xeon CPU, once priced at $1,550 US when it launched, and the 16 gigabytes of RAM wasn't too bad. The X79 board was 300 RMB, the E5 2670 was about 400 RMB, or $56, similar to most listings on AliExpress, and the memory was about 90 RMB for each stick. We then asked a pretty straightforward question, can I have a discount? She sort of laughed, but knocked off 10%, resulting in a final price of 800 RMB, or $113 US. Looking over the pricing, the same Samsung memory would have cost us $35 on AliExpress for 16 gigabytes, the cheapest 2670 Xeon on AliExpress would have cost us $58, and the motherboard would cost roughly 51 to 60 per piece if we bought 100 of them. We couldn't find the exact board in a single unit, but even this bulk price is similar to what we paid. Were we to order these parts online, it'd cost us $144 or so, so we were pretty on mark for the pricing. That said, again, we didn't really haggle that hard as we were already causing a bit of a scene, and we also weren't focused on price. We were focused on getting some interesting parts. Time to find a CPU cooler for our build, but we needed to look for guards before moving along. Oh, do you want to scout ahead near the escalator? Yeah. 
With the coast clear, we found a cooling shop next. We wanted to try and buy some of the famous cheap open loop water cooling parts. All of these shops have the same stuff we have in the U.S., like your average Cooler Master closed loop liquid coolers, standard tower coolers, a lot of Cooler Master stuff, but we wanted something more unique. It was a little hard to communicate that we wanted open loop cooling, but eventually we figured it out. Should we do closed loop or TDP? CPU. We then fumbled through Google Translate to ask him if anywhere in the building had open loop cooling at all, but he said no. We even checked Linus's old video with strange parts where the pair struggled to find more than a single open loop kit in the whole mall. Ultimately, we decided on a tricked out 120 millimeter air cooler with a dragon painted on top of it. Can't go wrong there because 15 year old me would have loved having this cooler for a first system build. We paid about $15 for this too, which is well below the price of your average cheap 120 cooler on Newegg. But whether it's any good will be a different story. We didn't film the thermal paste shop or not much of it, but our next stop was to find some thermal compound for our new computer. As stated earlier, it's impossible to buy some stuff in a single unit SKU, and thermal paste is definitely one of those things. We ventured to a darker corner of an empty upstairs floor to find our Tim dealer. Originally, we asked for a single tube, but the shopkeeper laughed and shook her head, and so we then asked, well, how much is it for this bag of syringes? Which definitely doesn't sound sketchy, but she told us it was $5 US. After hearing that, we asked if she had a better model available, and she pulled out the gold tubes. The HY510 model of thermal grease costs about $4 US for a 30 gram tube on Amazon, and we ended up buying an entire bag of the 1.93 watt per meter Kelvin compound for $5. We then bought some of the HY610 gold model compound. HY610 is rated at 3.05 watts per meter Kelvin, so still not great, but better if we can trust the numbers. And we were able to buy five 30 gram tubes plus a bunch of smaller tubes for about 10 bucks US. These are priced at $2.23 on AliExpress for 30 grams for reference. So we walked away slightly better off with our extra bag of smaller syringes. An SSD was next on our list. We had seen these Ramsta drives everywhere and really wanted one, but only because of the red fist on the marketing materials and the name that both screamed quality. After a few vendors told us not to film and another refused to sell us this model, we finally found someone willing to part with his beloved Ramsta SSD. At 240 gigabytes and accompanied with a genuine Ramsta foil sticker, so we knew it's not counterfeit, we knew we were finally in for a good SSD. The drive cost us under 20 US. We tipped the guy because we did actually end up making him run to a warehouse and spend 30 minutes finding one of these drives that we so desperately wanted, and we only wanted one of them. To be clear, this is probably total garbage as an SSD, but it looked different. We found one of these drives sold in the US for $56, which is quite some markup, but it was the only site we could find selling it. Ours also might be broken. We haven't checked yet. The last stop was the GPU. Back in March, just a few days before the AMD RX 560 XT came out in China only, we desperately asked every vendor if we could buy one ahead of launch. No one had it, so we returned this trip to try again. The GPU shop attendants were some of the nicest people we worked with during this trip. One of them spoke decent enough English that we weren't too slowed down by translate applications, and we were able to combine bits and pieces of Mandarin and English to communicate. They even asked us what we do, and when we showed them the YouTube channel, they gave approving nods. The attendants even patiently taught us how to say some of the company names in Chinese, which proved useful later in the trip. These guys were pretty awesome. We bought the Sapphire RX 560 XT dual fan card for cheap here, about 120 US, but this was back in May, so it was more expensive than it is now, and we hung out for a bit to ask some questions. Uh, what's your how cheap? 
to a shot channel. Okay, burning up. Yeah. Light in. How cheap? Yeah. How cheap? How cheap? How cheap? You can't get that. Uh, 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 yeah. John, John Gwen. John Gwen. Yes. The MSI Lightning 2080 Ti was on the shelf behind them, so we first established that we had absolutely no interest in buying it, and were just curious, and then asked how much it costs. In Shenzhen, this card was selling for about $600 more than it was in the U.S. at the time, at over $2,000 U.S., so we passed on buying this one. The only part that leaves out then is the power supply, which we'll source locally just because it was too heavy to carry back. We also got this. It's a gift for our... Uh, our primary video editor, it's a Nintendo Switch cooling fan. You're welcome. He really likes it. You should see him. He's like crying. He's so happy about it. Uh, so we got a Nintendo Switch cooling accessory, and in the same place, this is unrelated to the computer, but we picked up a game station, which of course many of you know is Dony's greatest console that they've ever made. So the game station is probably something Patrick will look at later. Uh, we're not quite sure what to do with it. I think it has 600 console or 600 classic games on it. We'll see if they're just ROMs or something. Uh, it weighs about the same as a Raspberry Pi, but it's maybe 30 times larger. So that's all the stuff we bought. The computer hardware items we'll be looking at separately in review. So the case is it's already been benchmarked. Patrick went through that. We had to slightly custom modify it to fit our video card, uh, but. It has been benchmarked, so we'll have a case review up. We've got a uh, review of this video card probably going up after the, some of the partner models for the 5700 series goes up. And then for the rest of this, the biggest thing will be doing a stream of building this computer. So we've got all the parts, just need to pull a power supply from somewhere. And once we assemble it, we'll see if it works, see if any of these parts were sold to us broken. Uh, or if they survive the trip home. But most of it was tested when we bought it. So check back for the stream. Not sure when that'll be yet, but we'll announce it on Twitter or in a news video or something. And thank you for watching. Let us know what you thought of this content below. Subscribe for more or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a limited edition shirt like this foil shirt that I'm wearing or one of our toolkits. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.